Welcome to Tony Unleashed, the podcast where we unleash the truth about all things pets. Our research and anecdotal evidence matched with pet expert interviews will help you help your pet thrive. We are here to answer questions, divulge information, and spread awareness about what's really going on in the world of pets. I am your co-host, Emily Taylor, pet nutrition enthusiast. And I'm Tony Shalaski, owner of Healthy Pet Products with three locations in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area, and recently expanded to Port Charlotte, Florida. Welcome to the show. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Tony Unleashed the Podcast. Em and I are here, ready to talk about influencers and what we all see, hear, and read. Um, you know, I love when people come in and say, well, they said, well, who the fuck is they? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, and in a day and age where just like influencers are so heavily influential. Yes. <laughs> and integrated into everybody's lives and yeah. are the new, the new, I don't know, Oprah of the world. Right. Just in, by their influence and the the gravity to their words and videos and everything. Right. And we're not really going to, we might name some names when we're having this conversation, but we're not calling anybody out as doing anything no. negligent or wrong or anything I think it's like just, that. I think it's a good, in this day and age when everything is like so heavily influenced by social media and we find ourselves just sitting and scrolling, I think it's a good conversation to talk about how it impacts our lives. And now it's very, even more so than ever, relevant to the pet world yeah. as well. I mean, I think we think of it more as like lifestyle, makeup, beauty, reality, but like it's very prominent in the pet world. In food, health, and nutrition. Mm -hmm. So because and I think that it has probably really catapulted in the social media world because most people are not getting the answers that they want from conventional veterinarians. Mm -hmm. So they are going to social media, they're coming yep. into their locally owned natural healthy pet food store for answers. And um yeah, just to pile on top of that, I think research has been harder. I think this is twofold. I think influencers have impacted this as well because blogs, I mean, I think blogs is the foundation of where this whole yeah. influencing social media aspect started. But because there are so many blogs out there, I think research is hard for pet parents to do oh, definitely. efficiently and effectively as well. I mean, it's almost like you either look at a blog or you go to Google Scholar and read just like an extremely heady article. And so research is becoming more and more challenging. And you can literally find an answer that you want with any opportunity on Google. And on yeah. you can find the answer in your favor, in the in the vet's favor, in the right. doctor's favor, in everybody's favor. Right. So ultimately it comes down to what makes sense to you. The fun. I, I had a recent conversation at the North Hills store with um, um, a husband and wife that came in, and they have a new puppy. They had the puppy with them, and um, they have been customers for years, though. Typically, fed over the years, Nature's Logic to a lab. They got a new doodle kind of thing, and puppy. Um, they, she's like, well, look at him. He's the researcher. And he's like, well, we have to feed grain. And I'm like, why do you have to feed grain? Mm -hmm. So I told him, I, I, you know, I started delicately and he's like, no, I want to hear it. And I said, well, I, I'm sorry, but I feel that there's propaganda behind it. Mm -hmm. And I told him the whole, my whole opinion on it. And he said, well, even if I pick a grain-based food or a, gra a grain-free food, I can just add some rice in. I said, so, wait, I said, yes, you can. I said, but if you went to the cardiologist and the cardiologist told you you had heart disease and told you to eat rice, do you really think it's going to fix your heart? And he was like. Wow, that's profound. Uh -huh. He was like. Okay, I see your point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I never even thought of it that way. Right? I mean, there's just so much more to it. T so much more to it. I mean, just adding grain to a dog's diet is not going to mm -mm. 
substantially change the the pathway of their health and well being. Correct. Correct. Um, I mean, it's just a simple grain. I mean, did we do an episode on DCM? DCM is degenerative cardiomyopathy. Recently in Pet Food Industry Magazine, um, on February 13th, 2024, there was an article published, Lawyer Analyzed U.S. $2.6 billion DCM Lawsuit Against Hills Pet Nutrition. Listeners, pardon me, but I do have to read this uh, for a little bit, so bear with me. The lawsuit alleges that Hills and a group of veterinarians worked together to manipulate the FDA into examining the possibility that certain grain-free dog foods increase, increased pets' risk for the potentially deadly heart disease, dilated cardiomyopathy. So there is a cat a class action lawsuit led by Keto Natural Pet Foods um, against Hills Pet Nutrition. Um, So just like we have thought all along that this was propaganda-based because the Hills Pet Nutrition and um, Royal Canin and the Purinas of the Worlds are losing market share, they are attacking um, the smaller... um, pet foods in the world, but the DCM and the grain-free foods, there is no link at all. Let it go. It's your mindset, your, your world and your mind changes when you're like, it's, it's different when you're on the outside talking about it, reading about it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and learning about it when it doesn't directly affect you. But then when you're actually in that position, you know, it's different. Right. And I'm sure, like, I mean, I think talking about the fear of grain, I mean, I don't know. I would, if I was, felt like maybe adding grain to my dog's diet would help, maybe, I mean, maybe I would. I don't know as a person. Yeah. I mean, even though I know my logistics out of my brain, like you said, knows that, like, yeah, rice isn't going to fix a major heart issue. (laughs) (laughs) But (laughs) when you... I might try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. try to, I don't know. It'd be interesting to hear. Yeah. But this article is available on Pet Food Industry, um, published on February 13th, 2024. Um, I will maybe see if Sid can add this to our blog on our website. Perfect. Um, healthy pet product. We'll do it on both healthypetproducts.net and tonyunleashed.com. Yeah. So a lot of influence. So, you know, with this increase in social media and even more so using social media as a career for a lot of people. And as we see this transition with, um, with, you know, my generation, the generation after me of having less children and having more pets, Mm -hmm. you know, taking on more pets and thinking of them as family, nutrition, health, and wellness has been an uptick. People are paying a lot more attention to it and influencers are capitalizing on it. I mean, why not? But, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of, um, brands are being, a lot of brands, manufacturers get called out. Yep. Um, there's, there's a lot of pushing for certain brands and not for other brands as well. And it's just, it's, it's like a, it's a parallel to the DCM in that there's just a lot of, um, fear around what to feed your pet. Right. And I think before we really dive into it, I think this is a great opportunity to say that, you know, Doing what's best for your pet is all situational and Mm -hmm. what you can do and what you can feed and what you can afford and the love and the attention that you have to get to it to your dog is a holistic approach and variation and um, diversity and rotation and moisture really are key benefits to the health and wellness and longevity of your dog. So overall, We've really recommended to not just stick to one protein if mm-hmm. you can't rotate through. Mm-hmm. Make sure you add moisture. Mm-hmm. Try new things. You know, um, to try to replace twenty percent of a kibble-based diet for dogs and cats with right. moist food, even if it is healthy, home-cooked, not spiced table scraps. Yep. Yes, I said and it. 
And I think, you know, when you do that, then you're not the fear of when something comes out that something is really bad, like uh, an article that comes out that says this is really bad for your dog or this is really bad for your dog. If you're rotating, if you're experimenting, if you're adding new things in, then you won't be scared by stuff like this. Right. And I really worry about the fear that's being put into um, the average consumer because we, I'm talking them off ledges every day Yeah, in the, in the stores. Yeah. And I fed Stella's and now it's on a list that some dogs are getting sick and I fed this or I fed that and I don't know what to feed. I'm just going to cook at home. And then they, you, you can't just cook at home for a pro- prolonged period of time. Right. Because you might not hit the full nutrient profile over, you right. know, over that time. But I, I just, I just want to talk people down a little bit. And just because, you know, a veterinarian is putting out a list of foods that have been called out as making animals sick, I, I don't think... I don't think it's the life and times of the melamine years and the dog food recalls of 2007 and 2008. I think it was technically in 2007 um, that um, a lot of dogs and cats were truly sick and dying from melamine, um, which is a protein um, synthetic protein replacement that can be put into pet food that manufacturers, a lot of manufacturers didn't realize were in their foods. So, and that was killing dogs. So we have, we have advanced leaps and bounds in the past 17 years Mm -hmm. um, in the pet food world for the better. Um, 2007, 2008 really doesn't feel like that long ago, but when you put a number to it, it's so long ago. I mean, it's almost reading close on 10 years there. And it's crazy to think the technology that has advanced from 2007, 2008. Just think about that alone. Mm -hmm. The technology Mm -hmm. that has advanced, the awareness, the attention to detail that has advanced. And, you know, to some extent, not all, putting putting details in things that matter. But, yeah, it's a lot. It can be a lot and it can be overwhelming. And I think it's full circle to the importance of independent retailers in this day and age is when things get really overwhelming Mm -hmm. on the internet Mm -hmm. that you have a place to kind of talk that through. Cause more often than not, your independent retailer is aware of everything that's going on in the internet and has an opinion and is like also as a pet owner and a pet lover and can like almost act as a therapist. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, well, I really, I mean, we really are. Yeah. I mean it, and if if anyone if you have questions don't hesitate to reach out you can you can email us at info at tonyunleashed.com mm-hmm. anytime about anything if you're not close to one of um, our Pittsburgh stores or um, our Port Charlotte Florida store um, we're happy to help um, don't go into panic mode please no and you know your dog you know your dog. And I think that is the fundamental key here. You know how your dog is. You know how any changes, behavioral changes, health changes, you Mm -hmm. give yourself the benefit of the doubt that you are so in tune with your Mm -hmm. dog, probably more than you want to give yourself credit for. Absolutely. Um, And this is also really fun. People who work at independent pet retailers love having these conversations. Mm -hmm. They love it. So. They will love to engage with you on it, especially if they're not busy. Like having that conversation is so fun and is you also learn so much from getting another person's perspective and someone who's working at an independent retailer, getting your perspective as the consumer and as being fearful and maybe not knowing the ins and out of pet manufacturing um, is really beneficial for everyone. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, but they do have a major impact on society. Major. Mm-hmm. Major. And it's just going to get worse, I think. Great. I mean, I don't know what the deal is with TikTok this day and age. I know there are some things with, like, TikTok, if it was, like, allowed, not allowed in America. <laughs> oh. 
I don't know. But they, they I'm stopped. I'm off of everything currently. They stopped all um, certain songs. There's like some licensing issues. So like anybody who put out a TikTok in the past who used a certain song that maybe didn't make the cut for licensing. Oh. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Well, I think that it has, I think that it, influencers have raised awareness of why you don't feed Kibbles and Bits and Purina and Pedigree and, and a lot of the lower quality brands. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I think it's been incredibly beneficial to break that stigma mm-hmm. and to break that boundary down that like it is socially and morally and ethically acceptable to feed your dog a fresh food in a fresh, high-moisture content diet and to do research as a consumer to figure out what you want to feed and what you can feed your dogs. Absolutely. And I love, like, there's a lot of, like, vets on social media, like Dr. Karen Becker and Dr. Judy Morgan, um, who talk about, who on their social media, like, key benefits of very specific ingredients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I find that to be so fun Mm -hmm. and engaging because it also, it adds, going back to like making it full circle, adds variety to my pet's food in particular. Because if, if like Karen, Dr. Karen Becker or Dr. Judy Morgan will say like broccoli is beneficial. I can't, we've been drinking wine, so I can't (laughs) list all the reasons why broccoli is beneficial. (laughs) But what I will say is that I did go to Trader Joe's and I did get some broccoli. (laughs) I won't be able to tell you why. It's a good. I did. I think it's a pretty good brain food. Uh, but I did. She got me. <laughs> so, so here's where my brain goes when it comes to social media influencers. So, and this, I promise you, it's not my ego talking. But I feel like you and I, and uh-huh. what we have to offer people, yeah. which is, I feel s- still extreme, mm-hmm. but. Meets people where they're at kind of conversation and kind right. of information. Right. I feel like we're the ones that should be heard. Heard. Yeah. Because it's not going to be like, you only can do this and only this and yeah. doing this. Like, it's it's gray. It's not as black and white. Right. It's like gray area. It's human. It's relatable. Right. It's realistic. Yeah. Because that's just what life is about. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And not doing it for, like, aesthetically pleasing purposes. Exactly. Some. But what I will say, though, like, <sighs> without the extreme... There wouldn't be that awareness. One hundred percent agree. But would I want to be that extreme person? Probably not. And I feel like we are extreme. Yeah. But so I guess. With that being said, tell all your friends and family about our podcast. Yeah. And because we're really trying to help and do good things. Right. And not put people into full okay. panic mode. What I will say. Okay, back to your point about about influencers and us and this podcast I think of it as is like some influencers out there may have like a commercial marketing agenda Mm. oh there definitely is that like they're getting paid Mm -hmm. to say something so like sometimes having that lens when you're going through social media to see things as like this is more like view it more as like a commercial or a marketing approach where we're just having conversation right I mean, everybody has an agenda. Yeah. I mean, we have, we need, I mean, this costs money to do. We, uh, we don't do it for free. Right. Um, so we do need sponsors. Uh, so if anyone's listening, I need a sponsor. <laughs> 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 Other than Beacon Sound Systems. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Anyone? So, yeah, just be careful what you're following on right. social media, who you're listening to. Right. Whoever they, and my have my air quotes up, because um, right. I hear it all the time. Customers come in all the time. Well, they said, well, who the fuck is they? Right. You know, and every dog is different. Every cat is different. We right. cannot, we, you cannot create a breed-specific 
kibble that is going to be good for every single Frenchie to eat Mm -hmm. from one year from the time that they're one year old to if they're lucky, 10 years old. Right. And yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think variety, moisture, high quality, highest quality, common sense, common sense, how your grandmother would have fed Acknowledging the gut, the brain, mm-hmm. the immune system, mm-hmm. inflammation is all intertwined. Yep. And you're probably not going to solve one issue by like just one thing. No. Um, minimize your vaccines, min- minimize the chemical load with flea and tick treatments, Minimize all that stuff. Don't use chemicals. Minimize your chemicals in your house. Don't you? I mean, try to use very fragrance free everything. Think about the scent, the powerful scent that your dog has. Um, mm-hmm. There's so much to think about. There really is. But also, don't be overwhelmed by that. <laughs> <laughs> Easy for us to say. But honestly, we're here for you. Yeah. Um, info at tonyunleashed.com. We greatly appreciate you listening. And we will sign, yeah. sign off and talk to you all soon. Yep. We want to give a big shout out to our sound engineer, Brad, from Beacon Sound Systems, LLC. This is the highest quality sound editing, and he knows exactly what to edit. So it's his fault the F-bombs are still in there. <laughs> you can reach Brad for all your sound editing needs through Instagram and Facebook. You'll follow at Beacon Sound Systems. Website, www, the number 4, beaconsound.com. Phone number, 724-471-2410. Beacon Sound is a locally owned company in our neck of the woods here in Pittsburgh, PA. So if you're in need of large LED screens, stages, lighting, or sound systems for any occasion, big or small, this is the company for you. Sounds like a party in one. And boy, do we need one. (laughs) 